When Jammers is like Pong on crack, the game originally released in arcades back in 1994 as a Neo Geo title for the MVS arcade cabinet. It was developed by Data East. They made a lot of awesome games back in the day. In this one, it was, it was simple. A one versus one competition with a flying disc you try to get past your opponent into their goal for various amounts of points depending on where you hit the goal. You only use two buttons in this game. You could throw and you could lob the disc. It was simple and easy to get into, but there is a lot to master here. Now, 28 years later, .mu has graced us with the sequel, Windjammers 2, plain and simple. Well, you know, there was no more needed to complicate the title of this game. If you enjoyed the original, I cannot see any reason this one won't tickle it for you. It has more characters to choose from. You got 10 instead of six and double the arenas to play on. The graphics are in a hand-drawn style that I think looks really good. It almost looks like you're watching a cartoon match. I mean, it, it's really nice looking. The, the game looks great. Now, first impressions may lead you to believe they just updated the graphics, you know, added a few more characters and stages, but it does go beyond that. Even though I, I would argue that a lot of Windjammer fans probably would have been fine if it stayed 100% to how the original played, but this sequel does add a few things. Now, instead of just two buttons, you have four. Now, I started playing this game like the original, thinking it was just two buttons. Yeah, I just jumped into it. That's what I was doing. I mean, as those two, throw and lob, are really the most that you need, you'll, you'll use them more than anything else. But quickly, I, I found out you can also jump and at attack the disc to deflect it. These two moves add a lot more to the strategy of the game, the way you go about trying to score, deflecting and all that. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's interesting. You got a lot more you could do here. You know, diving and throwing are still just one button. So it did become a thing where I, I kind of stuck to the basic two buttons more as it's hard to consciously move away from the throw button when it's so important. But when opportunity arises and you become more comfortable with the idea of two more moves, it's easy to start using those extra two buttons more often. I mean, it will be to your advantage to start learning how to implement jumping and deflecting early on, as even on the easy difficulty in the arcade mode, after a few matches, the opponents do start to bring out more moves themselves, so kind of want to, you know, have everything available to you, so definitely start learning that early on. Now, another addition to the sequel is the EX meter. You build up your power through the match to unleash your special moves, and you have, you know, a few different ones you can do depending on, you know, how you use this. So you press the throw and lob button at the same time, or you can use the right shoulder button, which I didn't realize was a, an option or a shortcut to those buttons until later on when I looked at the controller config. So I, I guess there's five buttons, but really that button just mimics pressing like on the Xbox or the Switch, the A and B button. So yeah, it's still four buttons in my opinion. Now, just like the original game, all the characters here, they vary in their power and speed, but I feel they're all fairly balanced depending on your play style. But some characters' EX power shots do seem way more difficult to catch than others. I mean, sometimes it seems like it's more about luck than anything. But at the same time, never once did I play a match where I felt like just because it seemed like a cheap shot, was I not able to make a comeback. So, I mean, sometimes it's just like getting accustomed to the way some of these moves are. But yeah, overall, I, I feel like it's pretty well balanced here. So the game also has a couple bonus rounds during the arcade mode. I kind of wish they would have implemented a few more, maybe a little bit more variety. Uh, but you know, it, it's just a quick distraction after a few matches in the arcade mode. So, I mean, it's fun having the two little bonuses there. I, I mean, I did want to just get right back into the matches while playing, but it, it's nice to have a little distraction here and there. Now you also have online play where you can do rank matches or quick matches, set that kind of stuff up. And my time playing online, it, it felt pretty good. Didn't have any weird latency issues or you know the, the character jumping around or anything like that. It felt smooth. It, it felt like I was playing somebody locally, so I didn't really have an issue with that. Now you can also play local co-op as well, which makes sense. I mean, this is an arcade style game. Gotta have that local co-op, so that is an option. They got everything covered here. I mean, I, I'm super happy that there's online play and, and it works very well from my time playing it. 
So the game just released for pretty much every console. Uh, the price should be around twenty dollars, but I did notice on release most places have it listed, you know, on sale for seventeen ninety nine. Or if you're like me and you pay for Xbox Game Pass, the game is available on the Xbox now for no additional monies if you pay for Game Pass. So that was a good thing. I just grabbed it and started playing. Now there there was a physical edition that could be pre-ordered on Limited Run Games for the Switch or the PS4. But that pre-sale ended. It ended a few days ago. So if you missed out on that, it's also available physically through Pix and Love. Uh, you know, if you missed out on that North American edition. I'm not sure if there's going to be like a physical version available elsewhere at a later time. But for now, those are the options available and no longer available. I love this kind of stuff. I mean... It plays like the original, but it just feels so smooth and it looks amazing. If you're into these kind of quick pick up and play you know, types of games, uh, this is one, it's simple to get into. It does have that addition of a couple more buttons, more moves and whatnot, but it felt like playing the original game. And that's the one thing, you know, I, I've played games that were classic games that got like a new sequel 20, 30 years later and it doesn't feel or look anything like the original. And I think .emu, .emu, however you say their name, my apologies. I, I can't speak today. But the job they done with this, with the graphics, the art style, the gameplay, it feels like Windjammers. And I can appreciate that. Nothing, nothing wrong with the game. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of anything negative I could say. But I think for the price, the package is really nice. I kind of wish this was a more widely available physical release, but you know it is what it is. Some of these companies they they go through these these limited uh, edition type uh, you know companies that distribute these games, and you know this one through limited run it wasn't like a limited run game. It was just being distributed through them, but that open pre-order is over. I'm sure eventually you'll find some on the open market, secondary market. Uh, for a markup. I don't know if this one will wind up being in Best Buy or not, but, uh, you know, I kind of wish I would have grabbed it after playing this because it, it is a fun one. It, it feels like, you know, current day Neo Geo. Like, whatever happened with the Neo Geo 3? Where is that, SNK? Like, this would have been amazing to be on your new console. Haven't heard any news on that in a while, but you know, when we do, we'll talk about that again. But yeah, if you like the original Windjammers, highly recommend Windjammers 2. Looking forward to Windjammers 3. Appreciate you guys. Bye.